and that's it. <laughs> you know, I think, you know, that's kind of what I want to get across here is that don't assume just because you see a picture in a book or, you know, a textbook or in, you know, cell signaling or whatever, that that is the pathway because it isn't. That cell signaling biology is this very, it's almost like an organism. It's almost like speech. And the more transcriptomes that I get, it's like the more dialects that I get to listen to. So when you start doing this enough, it doesn't become just numbers anymore. It becomes these cells talking, you know, and they all talk different ways. So I guess what I would do, you know, what I would stress to you guys is, you know, never take anything for granted. That if somebody gives you a, you know, a very simplified cell signaling diagram, it's probably wrong. That it, or it may be partially right, but there's a whole level of secondary signaling or primary signaling that you don't even know about going on right there. And that if you can look at the data itself, I think it will help you determine, get you to those true signaling pathways better than what an expert said 20 years ago in a tissue that you didn't even care about. Um, just want some acknowledgements, the lung neoplasia data, this was my work with the uh, um, uh, lung spore here on campus, UC Denver lung spore. Uh, Jupe correlations, uh, Mary Beth uh, Scheller did most of the experiments. Robert Wynn was the, the primary on that. Um, yeah, I did say that wrong. Christine Vo Winkle, uh, she was uh, basically head up the GSK3B correlations that I did and published her paper uh, with Oliver Hoffman and some other people here. Um, this is where you can reach me, um, although I'm still working on the the website <laughs> for about four months now. Um, but I am on YouTube. Please check me out on YouTube. All you, oh, sorry, wait a minute. I am on YouTube. If you just text search Michael Edwards Bioinformatics, you'll find me. I'm also on Facebook. Like uh, Enrique was saying, I've, I've taught this to high school kids. I'm not a liar. He's not a liar. <laughs> you can actually go. I have Google Plus pages where I've taught high school seniors how to do bioinformatics. And not only that, we did so that that uh, climate change thing we did. But we also analyzed climate change data. I mean, the nice thing about this is this just doesn't work on just biological data. You know, it works on everything. You know, it's numbers. Numbers associated with anything. If you analyze those numbers over time or compare it to different numbers, you're gonna learn a ton of different, you know, stuff about this system, whatever system that you wanna look at. Oh, and I'm also on Spotify. Um, so, as I tell my high school students, um, some of the lyrics are adult, but all the beats are legit, so. <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll take any questions you have. Questions? Yes. So Mike, one of the things that, that is challenging for, for us who are not bioinformaticians is obviously pathway analysis depend on basically people publishing data and then software coming up and saying, okay, these two genes are related based on some publication that's usually behind by a couple of years. So how do you, how do you deal with that? I mean, obviously you're, you're looking at potential cor correlations and associations based on basically old data. Right. That you're trying to basically, you're playing catch up with your software, so you may be actually missing quite a bit of biology. Totally. In terms of what's really going on. Well, I think a lot of them are starting to get to, you know, <laughs> there's this huge divide, right? You have the bioinformaticians who, you know, are kind of the numbers, computer people, they don't really understand the biology, and then you have the biologists who don't really understand the numbers, and they're trying to talk to each other. Like, I feel like I'm in the middle. You know, I started at the bench, so I kind of get both sides. You know, it's, it's, it's hard. I think, you know, all the researchers go, we want pathways, and then the computer people go, oh, well, we don't, okay, well, we'll, we'll just find pathways in the literature rather than making them themselves. So a lot of this software was what they're, instead of going to pathways, they're now going to networks, like I showed you, 
where they just go, is there any relationship in the literature at all? They don't even have to be in the same pathway, but there's, is there any evidence that these two genes, you know, interact with each other? And that's kind of a literature search. What you can also do now, and Illumina is really going into this area, is you can take your entire gene list, right? And it goes up and down, you know, you increase, decrease, and you basically throw it against all the gene lists that they have in their database, which is based on, at this point, it's about 21,000 different studies. And you say, what does mine look like? You know, and then basically what you're doing is you're pulling up studies that are similar to yours. Like so I think- enrichment analysis or something. Yeah, you know, it's, you know, you're right. It's, I, we, we need to get away from just the static, like this is the pathway, you know, do I see it? You know, because the pathways, they're just not accurate anymore. That there's just a whole complexity below it. You know, the secret is to dig into it and not have the computer spit you out answers. If you make the computer do your decision for you, then why do I need you, <laughs> right? What are you here for? I always tell this, and I, you know, I'm, go I'm gonna tell it again. I always tell this to mo most of my talks, is that there, everybody realizes that, you know, Big Blue, the IBM supercomputer, can beat the world's greatest chess player, right? Everybody's heard of that, okay? What they don't tell you is that chess player can then get a computer and beat Big Blue. <laughs> that it isn't man versus machine, it's if you put both of them together, they're better than both, right? All of this stuff, what, what is important is that you actually dig into the data and you actually do your own biological analysis. And don't rely on just this basically table of what it spits out, like this is in your thing. Go look. You know, does it make sense? You know, that's what my recommendation would be for you all. Any other questions? All right. Thank you.